Okay, in the last lecture, um, we did not get to independence and mutual exclusivity. So we're going to cover those today. Okay, so here's what it means to say that two events are independent. Events A and B are independent if the probability of A given B, if you don't remember what that means, then rewatch the previous lecture, okay? If that equals the probability of A. If that happens, then the two events are called independent. Okay, I want you to remember a couple of things about the probability of A given B. Okay, from the last lecture, I want you to remember that the probability of A given B, that's called conditional probability. I want you to remember that that equals the probability of their intersection divided by the probability of B. And that tells us something, doesn't it? That means that the probability of A intersect B would be equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B, right? So now, if A and B are independent, then this just equals the probability of A. So in that case, you would get the probability of A intersect B would equal the probability of A times the probability of B. Because if A and B are independent, then these two things are the same. So, this is always true. This is true if A and B are independent. Okay? Now, in plain language, being independent means that A and B have no um, influence on each other, okay? Because what this is really saying over here, the probability of A given B equaling the probability of A, what that's really saying is that <laughs> the probability of A occurring is the same whether B has occurred or not. So that means that the event B has no influence on event A occurring. Okay, so I'm going to write this down.
Okay. So I want you to remember a few things. I want you to remember that this is always true. The probability of A given B equals the probability of their intersection divided by the probability of B. That is always true. Which means that this is always true. The probability of A intersect B equals the probability of A given B times the probability of B. So you, I want you to know those formulas and know that those are always true. Okay? <coughs> and then I also want you to know that this is what it means for A and B to be independent. And that that implies this would be true down here. So the blue ones are always true. The pink ones are true if the two events are independent. Okay? All right. One more definition, and then we're just going to do a bunch of practice problems. This next definition is called mutually exclusive. Events A and B are mutually exclusive. If the probability of their intersection is zero. Okay, so in common terms, what that means is that the two events cannot both happen. Okay? Let me write that down. Like if you're rolling a die, the event of an even number and the event of an odd number are mutually exclusive because they can't both happen. You can't, you can't roll a number that's both even and odd. Okay? Now... I want you to remember a couple of things from the previous lecture. I want you to remember that the probability of A union B, oh, let me point out a couple other things. I want you to remember this as well. I want you to remember that intersection goes with the word and. So when we say the probability of A intersect B, that means the probability that A and B have both occurred. And union goes with the word or. So when we say the probability of A union B, that means the probability that A or B occurred. Okay, I want you to remember that. And I want you to remember this formula, the probability of A union B is always equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. That's always true, okay? Now, 
if the events are mutually exclusive, then this part would be zero. And so in that case, the probability of A union B ends up just being the sum of the probability of A with the probability of B. So again, this is always true. And this is true if A and B are mutually exclusive. Okay, and so you should know that this is what mutually exclusive means. And if they are mutually exclusive, then this is going to be true. And you should also need to know that this up here is always true. Okay. So that covers all of the material through section 3.3. But I want to now spend time just doing a bunch of practice problems from the stuff we learned in the last lecture plus this stuff. Okay, these are the try it examples from the book. Okay, let's look at this example. Try it number 3.4. All right, it says you have a fair, well shuffled deck of 52 cards. It consists of four suits. Okay, you guys probably know this. Um, you know how cards work, probably. If you don't, then you can read that description up there. All right, let's look at the first question. Suppose you know that the picked cards are Queen of Spades, King of Hearts, and Queen of Spades. So that means you're drawing a card three times. And first you draw Queen of Spades, next you draw King of Hearts, and then the third time you draw Queen of Spades again. It says, can you decide if the sampling was with or without replacement? We talked about that word replacement a long time ago. So let me remind you of what it means. Here we're drawing three cards. They are asking, after you draw a card, are we putting it back into the deck before we draw the next time? Or are we keeping the card out of the deck after it's been drawn? Okay, that's what it means. So it's a pretty obvious answer, isn't it? The Queen of Spades was drawn twice. And that could not happen unless we put it back in the deck after we drew it the first time, right? So that one, I think, is pretty obvious that it was done with replacement. Otherwise, you couldn't draw the same card twice. All right, B says, suppose that the cards that you draw are Queen of Spades, and then the second drawing was giving you a King of Hearts, and the third drawing gave you a jack of spades. Can you decide if the sampling was with or without replacement? Okay. So, what do you think about that? I would say that we can't tell. And here's the reason why. I certainly did not draw the same card twice. So I can't say that we definitely had replacement. But I can't say that we didn't have replacement either. So, for instance, I draw the Queen of Spades the first time. I might have put it back in the deck, or I might have left it out. I don't know from the information they gave me. Next, I drew the King of Hearts. Next, I drew the Jack of Spades. I don't know if the King of Hearts and the Queen of Spades were put back into the deck or not. So I would say that you can't tell in that case. All right, that's a pretty easy problem. Let's look at one that requires a little more work. Here's a similar question. You have the same deck of cards. And it says, for part A, you draw four cards. You draw the Queen of Spades, the One of Diamonds, the One of Clubs, 
and the Queen of Diamonds in that order. They just want to know, is that possible to do that if you do not have replacement? If you do not put the card back in the deck after drawing it, then is that situation possible? Well, it is, right? It is possible because there is no card there that was drawn twice. So it's, it's possible to do that even if you did not replace the card after drawing it each time. Okay? And then it says, is, is that possible with replacement? Well, of course it is. I can't even imagine why it wouldn't be. Okay, what about D? I mean, sorry, B. Look at that one. First you draw the King of Hearts, then the Seven of Diamonds, then the Six of Diamonds, and then the King of Hearts again. Would that be possible without replacement? No, it wouldn't because I couldn't draw the King of Hearts a second time if I did not replace it after drawing it the first time. Okay, and then you can look at C. I'll leave C up to you. Okay, now we're getting into something a little more interesting. We're actually going to calculate something. It says, draw two cards from a standard deck with replacement. Find the probability of getting at least one black card. Okay, now this is actually a really good question. This is going to require us to use some of those formulas that we just learned. Okay, so let's do this. Let's put some stuff in writing. So let's say A is the event that the first card is black. Okay, and then we'll say that B is the event that the second card is black. Okay. So, it says, find the probability of getting at least one black card. Okay, so, I want to point out to you that getting at least one black card That means that A or B happens. So that would be A union B. And it's important for you to realize that. Okay? And they are asking us for the probability of that. So the probability of A union B. Okay, now, up above, I pointed out that the probability of A union B is always equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Okay? Now, look at what it says here. It says you're doing this with replacement, which means after you draw the first card, you put it back, and then you draw the second card. So, what does that tell you about the two events, A and B, in regards to one of the two terms that we just learned in this lecture? It tells you that A and B are independent. What you draw in the second drawing has nothing at all to do with the first drawing, and that's because after the first drawing, you put the card back into the deck. So the first drawing and the second drawing have no influence on each other at all. So they are independent. 
And up above, I said that if two events are independent, then the probability of their intersection equals the product of their probabilities. So, our answer is going to be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus their product. Okay? Now let's figure it out. What's the probability of A? What is the probability that the first card you draw is black? Well, there's 13, no, sorry, there's 26 black cards out of 52 total cards. And so the probability of drawing a black card is 26 out of 52, which is a half. Okay, the probability that the second card is black will be also one half because there's 26 black cards out of 52 total cards because we're doing it with replacement. So no matter what I drew the first time, there will still be 26 black cards for the second draw. Okay. And so we have this. And what does that equal? A half plus a half minus a half times a half. So that's going to be one minus a fourth, and that's going to be three fourths. Or 0 0.75. There's the answer. All right, let's do another example. Okay, we have a box with two balls a red ball and a white ball. And we are going to select one ball, put it back, and then select a second ball. So that means we're sampling with replacement because we are putting the ball back in the box, the first one, after we draw it, putting it back in the box before we draw a second time. All right, let F be the event of getting the white ball twice. Let's find the probability of that. Okay, so because we are putting the ball back after the first drawing, that means the first drawing and the second drawing have nothing to do with each other. In other words, they are independent. Okay? So, what would be the event of getting a white ball twice? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write again. Here, let's Let's call A the event of getting white on the first draw. And we'll call B the event of getting white on the second draw. And let's go ahead, because I'm sure we're going to need it. Let's go ahead and write C is the event of getting red on the first draw. And D will be the event of getting red on the second draw. Okay, so F is the event of getting the white ball twice. Do you uh, recognize that that means A and B both happen? So in other words, F equals the intersection of A and B. So the probability of F
equals the probability of A intersect B and A and B are independent of each other. Whether I draw a white ball on the second draw has nothing to do with whether or not I drew white the first time. So they are independent and that means that the probability of their intersection equals the probability of A times the probability of B. Now what are those two probabilities? So you're going to reach in that box and take out a ball without looking. What's the probability that you get a white ball? The answer is 1 out of 2 or 1 half. Okay, what's the probability of getting a white ball the second time? Well, it's the same setup, and so it's going to be the same probability, one half. And so what's our answer? Our answer is one fourth. Okay, you see, knowing those formulas makes the problem a lot faster than actually counting every possibility. Another way to do this problem would have been to write down the sample space. I'll put it over here in this area here. Here's the sample space. We could have gotten white and then white, or white and then red, or red and then white. Whoops, there shouldn't be a comma there. Or red and then red. So there's our sample space. That's the four possible outcomes of two drawings. And to answer what's the event of getting the white ball twice, you would say that is one out of four. So you would say one fourth. Okay? But you see, knowing these formulas, you don't have to write down the sample space and count them all. For this one, it's not so bad. The sample space only has four possibilities. But what if it had 24 possibilities? Then it takes a lot longer. So it's worth our while to use these formulas so that we don't have to write out the sample space and count everything. Okay. Part B. Let G be the event of getting two balls of different colors. So again, let's walk through two ways of doing this problem to find the probability of G. So we'll do it the, the naive way, and I don't mean that as an insult. I mean naive means just not using anything special, okay? And then we will do it the sophisticated way, which again, doesn't mean necessarily better. It just means using something special, okay? So what we could do is write down every possible outcome. That's called the sample space. So there's four possible outcomes. White followed by white, white followed by red, red followed by white, or red followed by red. And G is the event of getting two balls of different colors. Let's circle those outcomes. That would be those two outcomes. They make up the event G. So one way of doing this would be to count that that could happen two ways out of four. And so we would say the probability is 2 over 4, which is 1 half. That's one way to do this problem. And in this case, that's probably the faster way. Okay? But I just want, for the sake of practice, to show you that there is another way of doing it. This will be longer, though. I could have said G means... A and C happen 
or B and D happen? So G is A and C or B and D. Okay. And then I can say these two things are mutually exclusive. I can't draw red and then white and also have drawn white and then red. They, they can't both be true. So those are mutually exclusive. And so therefore, the probability of their union is the sum of their probabilities. And since the second draw has nothing to do with the first draw, they are independent. And so therefore, the probability of A intersects C equals the probability of A times the probability of C. And the probability of B intersect D equals the probability of B times the probability of D. And so we end up with 1 half times 1 half plus 1 half times 1 half, which is a fourth plus a fourth, which equals 1 half. And that would be our answer, which is the same thing that we got if I just counted up there and counted 2 out of 4, which is 1 half. So I know this way down here of doing it was much longer, but I just want to show you that there's two ways of doing it. You can count, which is okay if there's not too many things to count, or you can use some formulas. Okay? All right, H. What is the event of getting white on the first pick? Oh, well, I mean, sorry. H is the event of getting white on the first pick. What's the probability of that? Well, we've already done that because as I look at that, I recognize that H is the same thing as A. And we already know that that probability is one half. Okay, so let's move on to the next one then. Or F and G mutually exclusive. Can you get a white ball twice and get two different colored balls? No, that's impossible. So they are mutually exclusive. Are G and H mutually exclusive? Can you get two different colored balls and have the first one be white? Sure, that can happen. So they are not mutually exclusive. Okay, next example. Let A be the event of learning Spanish and B is the event of learning German. Then A intersect B is the event of learning Spanish and German. Suppose the probability of learning Spanish is 0.4. The probability of learning German is 0.2 and the probability of learning both is 0 0.08, are the events independent? And then they give us a hint. If they are independent, then that means this would happen. But another way of saying that would be this. And as we talked about before, a third way would be this. So in other words, they're giving us a hint and they're say, saying, show any one of those three colored things is either true or not. If none of them are true, then the events are not independent. If any one of those three things are true, then the events are independent. Now, I think if you just think about it for a minute, you'll realize it's very easy for us to check this one here. 
okay? Because we know all three numbers. They told us that. It's just a question of, is 0 0.08 equal to 0 0.4 times 0 0.2? And obviously the answer is no, right? Or actually, wait, no, I take that back. Sorry, the answer is yes. I had my decimal point in the wrong place in my head. Okay, so the answer is yes. So this is true, which means the two events are independent. Okay, in, in uh, example 3.9, we have a bag with six red marbles marked with the numbers 1 through 6 and four green marbles marked with the numbers 1 through 4. And then they label three different events for us. And they've given us the sample space. Okay, we're going to draw one marble. They didn't say that, but that's what we're doing. We're drawing one marble. We could draw a red number one. Or a red number two. Or a red number three or a red number four, or a red five, or a red six, or a green one, or a green two, or a green three, or a green four. Okay? So that's the sample space. They're asking us a question. What's the probability of the intersection of G and O? So what would that mean? That would mean drawing a green marble and also drawing an odd numbered marble. So in other in other words, that would mean drawing a green marble with an odd number. How many of those are there? There's two of them. Out of a total of how many marbles? Ten. So that probability would equal two over ten, which is one-fifth or zero point two. Okay. Okay, example 10. A student goes to the library, and we have event B, they check out a book. Event D, they check out a DVD. And they give us the probability of B, the probability of D, and the probability of their intersection. And they ask for the probability of... B given D. Well, this just comes down to knowing the formula that I showed you. Okay, that equals the probability of their intersection divided by the probability of the second one, which is D. Okay, and they give us both of those numbers. You just have to do 0 0.4 divided by, oh, I'm sorry, that's not it, it's 0 0.2. I was looking at the wrong thing. 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.3. And what are we going to get? We're going to get 2 thirds or... If it's a decimal you want, it'll be what? This is important. 0.6 repeating. If you want to get it marked correctly. I'm not saying on the homework necessarily. You, you can try that on Newton and see if they will accept rounded off decimals. Okay. Or read the directions and see if they ask for rounded off decimals. Okay. But on a test, I want an exact answer. So... If the answer is two-thirds and you want to write it as a decimal, you must write 0.6 repeating in order to get full credit. Okay? All right, let's do part B. What's the probability of D given B? So that's very similar. That's the probability of their intersection divided by... The probability 
of B, so that would be 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.4, which is 2 fourths, which is a half, which is 0 0.5. Okay, are they independent? Well, let's check. If they are independent, that would mean the probability of their intersection, which is right here, equals the product of their probabilities. So is zero, whoops, is 0 0.2 equal to 0 0.4 times 0 0.3? And the answer is no. So they're not independent. Are they mutually exclusive. This part here is not really a math problem as much as it is sort of a common sense problem. Um, is it possible for both to happen? And the answer is given to us right here. The answer is yes, it is possible because the probability of B and D both happening is not zero. It's 0.2. Since the probability of B and D both happening is not zero, then that means they are not mutually exclusive. Okay, and there are some other examples in the book, but we're almost at 45 minutes now, so I think we should probably stop this lecture. Okay, you can look at the other examples. If you have any difficulty with them, you can ask me during the discussions, and I'll help you with them.